religion is not based on beliefs alone. Mm -hmm. The most powerful voice in history to have said that is Gautama Buddha. Mm -hmm. Religion is also based on conduct. Mm -hmm. And the Quran confirms that. <laughs>
And only those endowed with insight will be able to penetrate. So forget it, Washington. You can penetrate it. The Mutashabihat has to be interpreted. And we must make an effort to interpret it. But only Allah can confirm an interpretation to be correct. I thought that there was a mistake in punctuation. I thought that there, this was my teacher's view. And I also had that view until I realized I was wrong. Until any time I'm wrong, I'm so happy. I'm so happy to declare I was wrong. All right. And correct myself. This is integrity in scholarship. So I realized I was wrong. Uh, that it is, it is only Allah who can confirm an interpretation to be correct. But we must make the effort to interpret because this is a part of the Quran, mm. a very important part of the Quran, the Mutashabihat. And we make an interpretation, we say Allah knows best. If our interpretation is correct, then always this is truth. Mm. And truth will survive despite all the critics. They can make all the noise they want to make. It makes no difference. Truth will survive. Mm. And if our interpretation is wrong, but we did make the effort with sincerity, Monsieur, we still get blessings for having made the effort. Mm. The interpretation is wrong. It'll go down the river tomorrow, be forgotten. But we must still make the effort to try to penetrate the Mutashabihat of the Quran. But the belief system, therefore, cannot come from Mutashabihat. The belief system must come from the Quran, but from that part of the Quran, which is plain and clear. But the Quran, which is plain and clear, and my Shia brothers must not be annoyed with me when I say this. Listen to me, it will benefit you. The Quran, which is plain and clear, the Muhkamah, does never, never, never say that the leadership of this Ummah is vested in the Ahlul Bayt. Mm. Good? Yeah. And so we have differences with them on these issues. But that does not mean that you have the right to say the Akufar. If you want to declare the Akufar, bring the Fatwa, which has achieved its ma, And then explain to me how it is that they have never been stopped from performing the Hajj. This is irrefutable logic. The only way you can say that they are not Muslims is this way. There's no other way. Okay. So I recognize them as Muslims. And I go to them, therefore, with the love and affection worthy of Muslims. I don't judge people always only by beliefs. I judge them also by conduct. And the only leader I have found in my lifetime, who have stood up with incredible, incredible courage to point his finger at Washington and to say, this is Shaitan al-Kabir. I've never heard any Saudi scholars, Saudi leaders speak like that. Mm -hmm. I've never seen any of these bogus leaders that we have today speak and point to Washington, Shaitan al-Kabir. But Imam Khomeini, Rahimahullah, you don't like what I've said, get lost. Get lost. I am the freedom. I have the freedom to say, Imam al Khomeini, Rahimahullah, you don't like that? Get lost. Leave me alone. I have the freedom to speak. You don't want to listen to me? Go your way. Imam al Khomeini, Rahimahullah, had the incredible courage that Pakistan doesn't have. To point his finger at Washington and say, this is Shaitan al-Kabir. I honor him for that. The way I honor Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. The way I honor Hugo Chavez. I wish we had leaders like that in the world of Islam. So yes, our Shia brothers do make mistakes. And when we try to correct them, we do so in a loving way, not with boxing gloves. We don't want to win any debate with anyone. 
Others do that, not us. When you try to win a debate, you win a debate with others, you leave a, a, a record behind you that stinks. Yes, we won the debate. Look at the record of hatred and hostility you leave. I, that's not my way. I've been to Iran many, many times, and I've traveled extensively in Iran. And the Shia brothers in Islam in Iran have always, always, always recognized and respected me and received me with kindness and affection. But that does not mean that I will not point out the areas where we differ. Mm -hmm. I also point out the areas where we are in agreement. Right. And one of those, of course, mm -hmm. is that there's a big war coming. Right. And after the big war, there's going to be a conquest mm -hmm. of Constantinople seven years after the big war. Our critics say, oh, no, 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 the big war took place in 1453. Let them continue to dream. History will leave them behind. The world is listening to me. And after the great war and the conquest of Constantinople, we will return Hagia Sophia to those to whom it rightfully belongs. The Shia and the Sunni are agreed on this. It's only Turkey mm -hmm. which remains brainwashed until the end of the world. Yeah, yeah. Religion is yeah. not based on beliefs alone. Mm -hmm. The most powerful voice in history to have said that is Gautama Buddha. Mm -hmm. Religion is also based on conduct. Mm -hmm. And the Quran confirms that. Our people are miskeen today. Millions and millions and millions are miskeen today. And they with their petrodollars living luxuriously, they eat their filth and they leave our people to, to, to suffer in destitution. And Allah says, this is the repudiation of religion. But do you find this kind of analysis? Huh? So you don't judge the Shia only on the basis of beliefs. Mm. You also judge them on the basis of their conduct. Mm. And always give me a moment. Mm. The United States of America and its allies in NATO are today the greatest oppressors in the world. This is the difference between me and those who took CIA money to go and wage a bogus jihad in Syria. This is the difference between my scholarship and those who took CIA dollars and dollars from the Mossad and from Saudi Arabia and Qatar and Turkey to go and wage their bogus jihad in Syria. How many times do I have to repeat it? This is our difference. This is the greatest oppressor in the world. And you take in money from them and weapons from them to wage your jihad. But look at Iran. United States, which used to change governments in all of Central and South America, willy nilly, anytime they wanted, gunboat diplomacy, 200 years of regime change, acts and read the history of the United States. And then came Hugo Chavez in Venezuela. And uh, he blasted the United States that the wealth of Venezuela was going outside of Venezuela. Venezuela has oil, it has gas, it has gold, it has so many things. But the wealth was going outside and going to an elite in Venezuela. And the masses of Venezuelans were in miserable poverty. He says this has to change. The wealth of the country has to be distributed equally, has to be driven justly. The poor must get out of it. And they tried everything they could to get rid of Hugo Chavez. And then after Hugo Chavez, Maduro, including imposing a quarantine on Venezuela so that no tankers can come with oil to help Venezuela because the refineries were not working. What did Iran do? Do you think Pakistan has the courage to do what Iran did? 
or in Indonesia or Malaysia or, near, or Turkey or near, Iran sent five tankers filled with oil. The U.S. warships were in the Gulf, in, in the Caribbean Sea. The U.S. warships were there. And Iran defied the U.S. warships and went and delivered the oil to Venezuela. This is courage. This is a profile of courage. You don't judge people only on the belief system. You're a schoolboy. You must also judge them on the basis of their conduct. And Iran has displayed incredible courage. Mm -hmm.